Recall vote. Recall vote. Yeah, I did. Actually, this morning I sat there and I said, you know what, I was the Northeast Division governor last year, and I said, watch me say Northeast today. Wouldn't that be a thing? And I said, you know what, I'm going to do it to see who notices. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have to be slick with Howard. I did it recently at Marion, so I'd like to add that in there where I can. Um, I am your Northwest Division governor. Welcome to your contest today. Thank you for everybody that can come out and honor all of our contestants at our contest this, this afternoon. Yeah.
They want an area, and someone's going to win today and represent us at the district conference. This is no small feat. They sacrifice nights, weekends, time with significant others. So it's a pretty awesome achievement that they're here. So we'll have two contests today: the evaluation contest and the humorous speaking contest. Evaluation will be first. After that, we'll have a short 10-minute break, and we ask. Please, everyone, to be in your seats at the end of that break. Last thing we want to do is keep you away from the Bears game that's going on later today. For any Bears fans, <laughs> I'm one too, so I don't want to keep you from that. In my best announcer's voice possible, ladies and gentlemen, contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. With that said, let the contest begin! In order to have a contest, we need contestants. Here is the speaking order. Judges, please pay attention. Number one. Iqbal Acha. Evaluation contestant number one, Iqbal Acha. Evaluation contestant number two, Sakti Kazrama Linga. Sakti Kazrama Linga. Evaluation contestant number three, Paul Lockwood. Evaluation contestant number three, Paul Lockwood. Evaluation contestant number four, Glenn Reed. Evaluation contestant number four, <coughs> Glenn Reed. Evaluation contestant number five, Jerry Evans. Evaluation contestant number five, Jerry Evans. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is an evaluation contestant number six, Harry James. Evaluation contestant number six, Harry James. Henry, oh, forgive me, that's me not reading the <coughs> Sunday morning or afternoon. Uh, does anyone need those names repeated? So you should have six contestants, evaluation cont contest. I think we're ready to go. Alright, awesome. Now, as with any contest, we need a target speaker. So if you could please help me with a giant uproar with John Sarpalas. Use your excitement, John Sarpalas. Because sitting right there is Debbie, the girl I got the crush on for the last six months, and I'm too afraid to 
even talk to her, but she's sitting right there. And I'm way in the back with my buddies, and they're chuckling, and I know they're making fun of me. And this paper is just making noise because I'm shaking so bad. Sweat's pouring down. I sit down. I think, oh, I'm never going to do this again. Never, ever. And I manage to escape it for the next 20 years. But 20 years goes by, and I'm having a midlife crisis. So I joined a men's support group. And after a little bit of time, I'm up there pouring my heart out in front of 20 guys. And it really feels good. And I really connect with these guys. And I connect with the program. And a few years go on, and I'm leading the program. And then it dawns on me, hey, you're public speaking. And you're not afraid. You're not nervous. Why? Well, I was passionate about what I was doing with these men. I was really excited. This really had helped my life, and I was helping them. And then I didn't have to memorize anything. I just had to get up and talk about what I knew. I knew what the program was. I could get up there and do it. So I didn't have those two problems that I wanted. I didn't have to write it. I didn't have to memorize it. And the third one was, well, you know what? I'm just so excited about this. I don't care if I'm a little nervous. Maybe I'm just excited. So be excited. So how do we translate this into something for our people in our clubs? Why don't we go back and get those new speakers excited about something to get up and talk about? Let's not bog them down with writing it. In fact, why do we want to write it? We want it to sound fresh and spontaneous. I understand if you're running for the world championship, you're going to know this speech backwards and forwards and have it memorized and written and analyzed. But for most of us, public speaking is about doing presentations at work, or getting up at a club and getting people motivated. It's all about motivation. And what's more motivating than being excited about it? And I'm really excited about public speaking. So what are you excited about? What is it that you're dying to talk about and holding back on? Have you thought about what your next speech is going to be? And what's in here that's percolating that needs to come out? And can you get up and say it with excitement? So what I suggest is you don't necessarily sit down and write this. Just get up and start talking about what excites you for a few minutes, and then make some notes. And then talk a little more and make some more notes. Yes, it's practice. Get up and do it. Get up and see what flows. Get up and see what feels right and what's coming out. <clears throat> let's encourage people back in our clubs, but let's set an example. Every one of us has got something inside. <coughs> Go home tonight and get on that club website. And sign up. And then make a couple notes. And then for the next few days, spend 10 minutes standing up. And I like to spend five minutes in front of my bathroom mirror. I don't know why it works for me, but it does. It helps me with that eye contact. Every one of us can do this because we talk every day in our lives. It's about a conversation. We're good at conversations. This is just a conversation. I'm talking to her right now. And then I'm going to talk to the fellow over there. That's all this is. Let's take this back to our clubs. Let's get them excited. And let's show them the excitement that we have for a topic. There was a woman last week at a contest I was at. She spoke about fruitcakes. Fruitcakes. <laughs> I'm excited about trying the ones with blender in them. <laughs> so what's your fruitcake? What's your fruitcake? <laughs> Go home tonight and sign up.
John, you know the drill. Club name, club location, and how long you've been with Toastmasters. I have been North Suburban Toastmasters, Club 612. We meet in the Glen, in Glenview, on the first and third Thursdays. And I've been a Toastmaster, I'll be a Toastmaster for two years this November. Choose 
to go back and fix it in your life? You know, what was that one little thing you should have, could have, or would have? So I, I believe we're, we're almost out of time, but before we wrap it up, I also noticed that you're a public speaking coach. And I believe that for some Toastmasters, we're either hoping to be that someday, or for other Toastmasters, we already are. But what I'm curious to know more about is tips and tricks that you've learned that would help us. Well, I... Limited to three. Limited to three tips. <laughs> Get out there and spread the word outside of Toastmasters. I'm starting to speak at Lions Clubs, Rotaries, things like that. I actually started coaching candidates for office for public speaking. I was very active in politics. And so that's where I first started back in 99. In fact, one of our US senators was someone I coached back in 99. So that's how I started, and I built it from there. I don't know if I had actual tips, but that's what it came well, and I, I still think we have a little bit of extra time. I don't want to let you go yet, because I mean, as for any Jerry McCroy fans, it's all about stage time, stage time, stage time. Well, the question is, you competed last year in the evaluation. I did. You came to my club, you evaluated all five speakers that night. I thought, oh my gosh, how can you remember their names a little evaluated five people in one night? How did you find that experience? Uh, it was pretty wild. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Timer. Ladies and gentlemen, evaluation contestant number one, Iqbal Acha. Iqbal Acha, evaluation contestant number one. Years had elapsed, 
and now you were moving into a different space in your life, we came along with you. But those were just some of the smaller parts that I thought were great. The things that you did really well, John, the first thing is your ability to leverage humor and incorporate it into your speech. You have a very natural gift of being able to connect with your audience, and the humor that you used was very distinct. Some of the things that I truly appreciated, number one, you talked about being able to be scared. Being scared, the paper was physically shaking, and you pointed to someone in the audience and said, and there's my potential girlfriend, Debbie, who I'm absolutely scared to talk about. That was one thing that made us laugh. But the other part, of course, was the part where you mentioned fruitcakes. Because you now took something that was very funny in the past, and you elevated it to a different level. You said, fruitcakes! I'm waiting for the one to talk about liquor! That was funny, and it was really good that you incorporated that. But John, the last thing that you did very well is that you helped us understand that this was not just a speech to make us help move forward, but it was a call to action. It was an opportunity for us to rise above where we are today, and for us to do something. Don't write your speech. Speak from your passion. Know what your excitement is. Get out there, do it, and sign up on the website. Good. I like that. Now John, those are things that you've done well. What can you do better to refine your speech in the future? There were two things I thought that would have made your speech just a little bit better. I felt that the introduction of your speech was a little lengthier than expected. You spent a lot of time talking about your past, rather than helping us organize the speech to say, I'm going to teach you three things today. Don't write your speech, don't memorize it, and get out there and talk with your passion. And those three things would have helped your speech very well. The last thing I would share with you that I thought would have been better is if you had had a little bit of a slower pace. I felt that at some parts of your speech you were going too quickly, and in some parts of your speech, there was just a little bit of a lag. But John, this is a great speech. You have the ability to incorporate humor. You have the ability to give us a call to action using the stage well. And if you try and incorporate the two things I shared with you, just a little bit more organization and a lot, a little bit less of the, the time space, I cannot wait to see you grace the stage again in your next speech. Mr. Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, evaluation contestant number two, Sati Kazrama Linga. Sati Kazrama Linga, evaluation contestant number two.
but was one thing that I really felt that I could, could connect with me. Thank you for sharing your experience. And in terms of delivery, I thought it was a very passionate, high energy delivery. We could feel the energy in your nerves right from sitting at the back. So that was great. Thank you again for that. And in terms of uh, the manner in which you delivered the speech, you were pretty relaxed, no signs of nervousness, you moved around here and you had a pretty uh, free body language which <coughs> went well very along with your speech. So that was great. And in terms of how you took the whole speech, I thought you had a purpose in mind. You wanted the audience to take action. You had a call to action all along your speech and at very much at the end you asked, so what's your fruitcake? That's great because now we all will think about you when we look at fruitcakes next. I, I really enjoyed all aspects of your speech, considering that it's a topic that we all could relate to and very, feel very passionate about. So now, if you were to give this same speech in a different setting, uh, I would consider, uh, I, would, I would ask that you consider doing a couple of things differently. One, uh, you had a lot of information that you shared with us, so maybe you could consider reducing something and take pauses along the way so that we could observe the information in a much more effective way. That's the one thing that I would suggest that you could consider. And what's the second thing? I think you already did great in this, but just to take it to the next level, the audience needs your love, more love. So maybe if you could consider giving more focused eye contact instead of gazing around the room, that's something that I think uh, would make us feel loved. So really, I think uh, it was a topic that I, I, I feel very passionate about and that connected with all of us. Thank you again for sharing your experience and I wish you the best of luck with your most message. Evaluation contestant number three, Paul Lockwood. Paul Lockwood, evaluation contestant number three. Give prepared speeches. 
very much. You made me want to give a speech. I'm not saying tonight I'm going to go right, but I, I will be fine. <laughs> One suggestion in terms of content. Watch out for your pacing. And I'm not talking about pacing back and forth. I'm talking about the pace of the speech. Use more pauses. One of the things I notice is that you speak very fast, and you don't take a lot of pauses. You use connector words a little bit, and so keep an eye out for that. From a delivery standpoint, I thought you were very strong in terms of your vocal variety. You didn't just speak at one level, you gave us a nice range of level. One suggestion on delivery, watch the gestures. You do a lot of the, the hands right about here. Occasionally, have them at your side. Just relax. It's difficult to relax, I understand, in this kind of environment. But having them at your side on occasion, and then bringing them up to make a strong point, makes it so much stronger. Let's show them the excitement. I thought you showed us the excitement. I thought you showed us the passion. I thought the story that you gave about the men's group, very, very powerful, that that helped you while you were helping them. And I think that's really what Toastmasters is all about, helping all of us help each other with our communication skills. So keep showing the excitement. Look forward to seeing you again. Evaluation contestant number four, Glenn Reed. Glenn Reed, evaluation contestant number four.
for understanding and following the speech. The style, which we don't always talk about content as much in Toastmasters, and I think we should, was great. You use short words and short sentences, and you did use repeat, re repeated words. This enables the audience to process what you're saying and helps you get your message across. Also, you used specific words and vivid words, like the fruitcake. How many times does that get made into a Toastmaster speech? <laughs> but that creates a great image. It was funny, and it really helps make it more a you speech. It's not just a generic using overgeneralizations. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about your delivery, which was also excellent. You had great eye contact. You had very good dynamic body language. And by that I mean you had a natural stance. You used great facial expression. You had a lot of gestures, which were very good. Also, what I heard was you had a very strong speaking voice. And you used great vocal variety. You used great pauses like I just did there. That's great. And you had very good facial expression and expressive words. Also, you had strong volume, which you varied some, to some degree, like when you did the dialogue and you were talking about the teacher prompting you to make a Now that I've talked about your content and delivery, I'd just like to summarize with a few suggestions. Try to use a more, excuse me, more varied gestures, because you did a lot of this kind of gesture. Try to do a little more variety there. Also, try to move about the stage a bit more. You were over here most of the time, but try to move about a bit more. And on vocal variety, I really enjoyed when you did talk softly and did the megaphone. I think if you did more of that, that would be even more impactful. But overall, excellent delivery, and I look forward to hearing your next speech. Thank you, Madam Tyner. Evaluation contestant number five, Jerry Evans. Jerry Evans, evaluation contestant number five. Too fast. 
you could have planted yourself, taken a little bit stronger stance as you move through the content of the speech, or the body of the speech rather, and kind of slow that down a little bit just to kind of give us pause to absorb some of the things that you're talking about. One of the things I really enjoyed about the speech is that you gave a personal example. From those of us probably going back to childhood, we think of the fear of public speaking, which is really more speaking in public, because we do it every single day. Relating back to childhood, fast forwarding to uh, you joining the men's group. In relationship to the men's group, again, a personal story. I would have liked you to delve into that a little bit more to kind of expound on that. Because as you build some of your skills and overcome some of that fear, it's like, how did you do that in the men's group? How did that really benefit you, and how did you take that forward going into especially your, your professional career? So I'm going to tighten up those transitions a little more, so as you transition from talking about in school play, and then going into the men's group, so just to involve that a little bit more. One of the things that we talk about, of course, in giving any kind of speech is that a personal story beats a speech any day of the week. And you said something very key in the speech, and that was about having a conversation with your audience. One of the best ways that we can do is to connect with our audience is to have a conversation, <coughs> not make it a presentation. When you were going into the back end of your speech toward the very end and you transitioned to talking about the clubs, I would tighten that up to again relate it to just the fear of speaking in public or fear of public speaking and then how we can all relate to that either as a child or an adult and especially those as in Toastmasters. I don't think there's any of us in any of the clubs in the district that do not have members that are still have anxiety attacks, they're fearful, they panic when they have to get up and do table topics, or to let alone a prepared speech. So I would incorporate again, keep that personal story in the speech, work on your transitions, pause a little bit more, tighten those up, and I think you can take already excellent speech to an excellent speech in your next time that you give. Mr. Kai Pesto. Madam Timer. Evaluation contestant number six. Henry Jane. Henry Jane. Evaluation contestant number six.
you are connected with every part of the body of the soul. No one was left alone. And you have a very good vocal writing. You know when to read your voice and when to whisper. To make your speech more kind of up with the, so with the rhythm. Also, I would say, your body language, your gesture is very natural. And you can keep doing that. And like any speech for evaluation, we want to bring up something for improvement you can consider. I would say you have a good start and nice body structure. The end sound a little bit too short. If you can end your speech with a little bit more summarizing what you have gone through and become a seasoned speaker, and that well, we can bring hope and be great. And also, when you were walking, pacing the stage, I think you were, you were talking. I would say, unless it's absolutely necessary, try to avoid talking while you are talking, uh, you are walking. So, I would say for a speech of uh, five to seven minutes, if you can break up into three to four parts, and you start from the center, you finish one part, and walk, try not to speak, not talk. To the second part, connecting here, and then walk to here, and connecting with here. And at the end, you come back, finish your speech. Overall, nice story, humor, good structure, and uh, nice body language, and uh, just work on the end, and also minimize the time while you're working. Thank you very much. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you please remain silent and remain in the room while the judges complete their ballots and the chief judge collects all the ballots. Or forgive me, the ballot not collect all the ballots. Ha, ha, ha. 
afternoon because someone is going to join the other seven and be a part of a magnificent conference. So what do you say to your money? Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And let me tell you, I heard a speech yesterday, and a young lady started by saying, what do you say to your money? And I thought, ooh, I can use that tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Countryside William Tell Holiday Inn. William Tell Banquets, 6201 Joliet Road, Unfortunately, there is no fruitcake. 